wave your hands to Jesus and let's declare it is true that we have the Lord who is our maker Father we thank you wave your hands to him as a sign of worship we have come to you the God who is alive thank him for the gift of today thank him for the abundance of his grace thank him for another moment of encounter in his presence the bible declares they go from strength to strength as many of them that appear before the lord in zion the bible says for without faith it is impossible to please him that everyone who comes to god must come believing that he is he exists and then that he's the rewarder of them that diligently seek him father we thank you now cry to him open up my understanding let your word come with fire let your power come let there be an engracing upon my spirit man today are you praying be intentional about your prayer be passionate about your prayer for everyone that ask it receive it to him that seek it he shall find and to him that knock it the door shall be opened For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While standing, I want to start by really, truly appreciating everyone. It takes a level of discipline to grow spiritually. Spiritual growth is for people who take God seriously, number one, and those who are disciplined enough to walk in keeping with divine principles it says in the latter time some will refuse to endure sound doctrine it takes the endurance of the spirit coming week after week let me tell you something while you are still standing it was very strong in my heart as i was praying and preparing to come um, it's important to know who you are as far as this ministry is concerned you are not followers never call yourself or think yourself to be a follower a follower is a fan a follower is one who subscribes to an individual or a platform based on emotions and based on interests no we are not followers followers are emotional people followers walk conditionally there are football fans who can be the fan of one football club one moment and then become utterly disappointed and switch uh, what they call them clubs immediately and unapologetically so and so you must realize that don't don't carry a fan mentality I'm coming here just because I love the idea of koinonia or I love Apostle Joshua Selman. It's more than that. You see, in this kingdom, when it has to do with growth, we are students in the school of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And when you submit yourself to growth, um, you have to take away the fan mentality and be connected. Every time you're coming, it's as though you are coming first to the school of the spirit, the threshing floor. You are coming to be made. You are coming to be built. You are coming to be established. I just thought to put that in place because um, we live in a celebrity generation. And sometimes we ship some of these ideas to church and we just have this idea like there is a celebrity man of God 
or a celebrity ministry, all that is absolute nonsense as far as the purposes of God is concerned. There is Jesus, the Son of the living God, and privileged vessels that have to communicate his intent to a people and a passionate people who are hungry to learn Christ. This is what makes a church. Any other thing out of it is a waste of time and the fabrication of men. It does not sustain any power whatsoever to transform. Are we together? Thank you for submitting yourself to the fasting. Please believe in fasting. Please, in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty, believe in the power of fasting and prayer. A believer who does not fast is not only a lazy Christian, is a Christian that will be defeated utterly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Having said that, let's greet one another. Good evening, everybody. God bless you. Please be seated. Welcome to Koinonia. Sometimes these things just burn in your heart and you want to get them out as a communication of your love for the people of God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Do not forget what I just said. No believer who comes to the house of God is a fan or a follower. No. Those who are outside the kingdom may call the membership of a church or a, a spiritual platform followers. They are only communicating based on their level of understanding. Believers, as far as the building or the structure of church and growth is concerned are called disciples they are students they are believers who have submitted themselves to the covenant of growth growth through mentorship growth through enlightenment and this is very very important um, two things about a student or two things about a disciple within within the limit of your covenant of submission to learn, you do not choose the menu for your growth. Within the limit of your covenant of submission, as far as your growth is concerned, you do not choose your menu. It is the assignment of the Holy Spirit in partnership with God's shepherds to walk and design a menu that is profitable for your growth. Matthew, I think it was Matthew, is it Matthew chapter 4? Or so, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4, I think, the temptation of Jesus. And he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Here, Jesus gives us two keys for the living of man one bread number two words so men live by bread and they live by words if you have bread alone you may not live effectively you need bread and you need words the greatest of the words being the word of god jesus himself was teaching us that man does not live by bread alone but by every word, including the word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jeremiah 3 and verse 16 says, And I will give you shepherds or pastors. 3.15 I will give you pastors after or according to my heart. And the Bible says, The menu that this spiritual chef serves is called knowledge and understanding I will give you pastors according to my heart they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding any territory is in trouble when there are three things there absent please listen according to scripture this is just just a background for tonight any territory at all is in trouble when three things are absent, 
Second Chronicles 15 and verse 3. The Bible tells us three things that if absent, a society is in trouble. For a long season, Israel had been without the true God. Number one, when a territory lacks the knowledge and allegiance to the true God, that territory is in trouble. Number two, without a teaching priest. If a territory lacks a teaching priest, that territory is in trouble. And number three, without law. These are the things that sponsor civilization and order. The knowledge of the true God, the knowledge of a teaching priest, or the presence of a teaching priest, and then laws. For a long season, Israel was without the true God, and without a teaching priest and without law. So we must be passionate about learning because when God comes to you, he makes you by introducing his word and his word contains his thoughts. You have to understand that the word logos means the thoughts of a man that seeks expression. His thoughts. Are we together? Every time you appear before the Lord, you must fight every spirit of distraction. Jesus himself told us that everywhere the saints are gathered, Satan is also around that corner. And he has the singular assignment of stealing the word. In the parable of the seed and the sower, he said the seed fell on all kinds of grounds. And as soon as the seed fell, Satan himself came to that ground and picked the seed. And he says those that fell on good ground were those who heard and had understanding. And among those who heard and had understanding, there were three levels of results. 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. May your life command 100-fold. In the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7. Let's go to the business of the night. Our online family, our Zaria family is also connecting. Blessings to you all. Pay attention and our global family. The Lord bless you. It's an honor to bring you the word. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7. Um, I told us last week we began and it will continue for a few more weeks. I will be teaching spiritual truths that relate to the graces and the spiritual investments that God has so graciously placed upon my life and upon this ministry. And the reason why the Lord instructed me to teach this, please keep that scripture, is the B part of this scripture. It says, let me read the whole verse. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, Paul is speaking now, because I have you in my heart, what a good shepherd, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. And here's what he says, ye all, how many? All. He says, ye all are partakers of my grace. Ye all. When God calls a man, please listen. When God calls a man, among the many equippings that God gives to that man, is he grants him access to several levels, several you should receive by submitting under a man and a ministry. It's not just spiritual information, but you must be partakers of that grace. Hallelujah. To partake of a grace means to be benefactors of that spiritual investment. And so last week, we considered wisdom, the spirit of wisdom. I'm praying that many of us will take out time and listen again to last week's teaching so that God would grant us grace. The Bible calls wisdom the principal thing. So please pay attention tonight and then the weeks that follow. God will help us to touch and teach along these graces that he so lavishly invested in this ministry. Why is that so? So that your life will become an evidence it would be clear to you and to creation that 
you have truly, truly embraced this grace and that with it you will excel in your own life, your Christian pursuit, and then you will help many to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. There are many graces, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 7, I believe, very instructive statement there. There are many graces that are available for the believers, but Paul, even though this context was alongside the grace of giving, but then it also applies to us. He says, therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, in utterance, in knowledge, in all diligence, and in your love to us, see that ye abound in this grace also. In as much as you have been benefactors of these other dimensions, faith, utterance, knowledge, diligence, and even having love for us, it is my desire, Paul is saying, to see this expression of grace also at work in your life. That means it is possible to embrace certain dimensions and certain levels of this grace, and yet the fullness of, what, of it um, may not find expression in your life as at yet. And like Paul, God sees my heart that I am desirous that these other dimensions of grace that many of us may not have come into the experience of, that by the teaching tonight, God will grant us access to this grace. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. This grace called favor. Write it down, please. This grace called favor. Just write it down and pray in the spirit in one minute. Hmm. This grace called favor. Salipa rakus ke te prende ke palakas ke pretia. Shiprandas ke te palakus yala. Change. Please pray. Following online, pray. We are going to tap tonight into deep riches of eternal life. He who was the Son has eternal life. He who was the Son has eternal life. Oh. I have the Son, so I have eternal life. He who was the Son has eternal life. Go ahead and pray. Holy, 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 is the Lord God Almighty. Is the Lord God Almighty? My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. Keep praying. And the people say, Holy, holy, holy. Ah. Holy, 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 Shalabala Cassiada. Holy, holy, holy. You're praying to open up your understanding. You're praying for the sake of your destiny. You're praying for the sake of the assignment that is set before you. One of the mysteries of the kingdom is about to be unveiled. Pali shalakata bariata. Shkadebrenteke parakatoska lebrendege balakata. 
Embragata barato sodo balakata priyadada. My life is about to change. Thank you, Jesus, for your word comes. Telamata kata pranda gade balakas. In the breath of the bros, kada balakato riyabada. Hallelujah. Please sit down. This grace called favor. I do not mean to be arrogant and forgive me if you ever perceive that there is any communication that represents or connotes arrogance. We are all products of God's mercy and grace. But I will tell you one truth, and I do not mean to insult your pedigree. This, for some reason, is about the hardest of the graces that I have seen as far as receiving this grace that God has placed upon my life and upon this ministry is concerned. I have seen people receive the grace for the prophetic so easily. I have seen people receive the grace for the miraculous so easily. I have seen people receive the grace, uh, dimensions of the anointing, the presence of God, revelation. But when it has to do with this grace called favor, I do not know why it has been so difficult and this is not just my experience alone i've had the honor and the privilege to interact with great great men and women veterans of the gospel within this nation and around the world and for some reason there seems to be the same complaint that it seems as though those who sit under this anointing for some reason are not able to receive and to replicate this grace and i'm praying that this case and this narrative will change tonight god is the all-wise god and in his dealings with men please pay attention i'm teaching now man man by default listen to me Man by default, by reason of the fallen nature and by reason of the limitation that our humanity brings to us, man is limited, grossly limited, more limited than we will ever imagine. And so as you sojourn on earth, as you walk on this earth, attempting to live out your destiny and your assignment, Sooner or later, you will realize how limited we can be. No matter how well-meaning we are, no matter how sincere we are, man, by default, is limited. He is not limited because he is evil, necessarily. He is not limited because, um, because he, is, he, is, he is bad or whatever it is. No, 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 no. The same limitation happens to good people and bad people. The same limitation happens to selfless and selfish people. There, there are different shades of limitations that are upon us by reason of wearing this mortal body. You have to be aware of this. And so God in his wisdom and in his love designed several systems of advantage. This is what I call them. Systems of advantage that if and when the saints access these systems of advantage, they can begin to turn an ordinary limited believer into a sign and a wonder. Please pay attention. That means that outside of the influence of these systems of advantage, nobody has the hope of finishing strong and living the fullness of your destiny in Christ. The advantage that the believer has, listen to me, the advantage that coming into the faith life provides, among many other things, is the, the access to these systems of advantage. So if you get born again, say at age 40, it's going to take you already, time is against you, is that true? Congratulations for coming into the kingdom, but time is already against you because the unit of destiny is time. 
And if you get born again at age 40, think how long it's going to take you to argue about the ministry of the Holy Spirit until you finally open up your heart to him, embrace the word of God, and now begin to learn the foundational rudiments of the gospel. By the time you gain any level of maturity at all, depending on the pace of your passion, it may be five, ten years down the line. Then now understanding your assignment and beginning to live it out. So by that, that the fact that you got to know God late already puts you in a disadvantage. So God brought into our Christian space systems of advantage like speed so that there is a possibility that under normal circumstances it will take you 10 years to know God and live out your destiny but that there is a condition that can be introduced in your life that within one two years you will catch up with those who have gone 10 years ahead of you it's called speed are we together now yes systems of advantage a woman for instance respectfully speaking who may have been trusting God for a child and she's 10, 15 years down the line. No child. Now, even if she gives birth to a child, how many years would she take in training that child or those children to now become adults and become mature? If she's supposed to have a child, one, 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 one space within two or three years is going to take that woman a long time. So God can introduce something into that condition. That one woman can have triplets or quadruplets. You see, that one is not delivery. That is restoration. Because God took 10, 12 years and put it in nine months. It's more than just celebrating the arrival of multiple children. God is making a statement by that miracle that you can have dominion over time. Are we together now? Everybody says systems of advantage. Yes, sir. You have to know the implication of being a child of God. Being a child of God has implications. And one of those systems of advantage that was put in the life of believers for our profiting to help us maximize our destinies in Christ is a grace called favor. Hmm. That life by default is cruel life by default is imbalanced life by default can be can be viciously unfair favor becomes the equalizer favor becomes that which brings your life to balance are we together now this grace called favor i already shared with you my experience and let me give honor to many many people but two great people that were used by God very mightily to influence my life and to be conduits for the reception of this grace. Number one, I honor him and I thank God he's alive and I pray he gets to hear and know this. Dr. Mike Mudok. It's one vessel that God used to communicate and help me understand this grace called favor. The second that I must give honor to, and I've stated it here, is Pat Robertson, Christian Broadcasting Network, 700 Club. It was a prayer. I listened to a broadcast where he was narrating the story that as a young minister about to start ministry, he went to God and prayed. And he said, Lord, give me wisdom. Number one, Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I went back and I prayed the same prayer. Lord, give me favor or wisdom. Give me favor and give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And like Jabez, God heard my prayer. And the rest today is history. History that glorifies God. History that brings glory to the name of the Lord. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. We're going to read two scriptures and then I'll begin to share this deep kingdom mystery. Let's read together in concert. Ready? One to read. And I will give these people favor. Please read. 
in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty please read it one more time and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go so you can know that favor is upon you and you can know when favor is not upon you scripture number two exodus 11 and verse 3 exodus 11 and verse 3 ready to read again thank you for your patience one to read and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of the egyptians moreover the man moses was very great in the land of egypt in the sight of pharaoh's servant and in the sight of the people stop we're going to read it one more time i know you read it from your mind now look at what you're reading and just pay attention to the power of what you're reading ready one more time and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of the egyptians then he isolates one man and shows what favor can do he says moreover the man moses as a result of that favor was very great in the land of egypt number two he was very great in the sight of pharaoh's servants number three he was very great in the sight of the people favor hmm. what is favor um let me let me just just pause before you write i think one of the reasons why many believers have not come into the reality of favor the mainstream definition of favor now i i i, I don't mean to to downplay or insult the fact that there have been many imbalances as far as the teaching of favor is concerned and that is largely the reason why many believers have not been able to step into the experience of favor the definition itself for most of you if i ask you please define for me favor what you will usually say is favor is unmerited access is that true you are not wrong, but you are largely incomplete. Favor is a grace that is multidimensional. You see, unmerited access is just one of the definitions of favor. And the very fact that you believe that favor is unmerited is the reason why we may never receive it. When you tell believers favor is merited, they say, no, 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 no. Favor is not merited. And because we have an idea that favor is unmerited, we feel there is nothing to study about the dynamics of the operation of favor. If something is unmerited, why should I go so far to study it? Let me tell you by the authority of God's word, favor is merited. Favor is multidimensional in its operation and it's just one dimension of favor that appears to look like unmerited favor or unmerited access. That is when it has to do with salvation, the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Any other dimension of favor is merited. To just believe that favor is unmerited looks like a very sincere communication but is destructive many believers have been unable to step into it you cannot call wisdom unmerited people know that wisdom is merited so they pursue it they learn everything to learn about wisdom so the first thing we have to correct in love tonight is that favor is merited favor is merited to call the entirety of favor unmerited access is not exactly right so let's divine favor i'll give you a few definitions number one favor is divine help divine assistance favor is divine help divine assistance god in partnership with men 
God in partnership with men providing help and assistance to one's life and destiny. Favor is divine help, divine assistance. God in partnership with men providing help, providing assistance to your life and your destiny. Please write it down. Divine help. Divine assistance. Are we together? So when God graciously participates in your life, your success, your destiny, and now coordinates men to also support the course of your life and your destiny, we say you are favored. And I told you favor is not unmerited. Favor is merited. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15. Here's the scripture that the Lord gave me to deliver me from that understanding that favor is unmerited. Please read with me if you're a child of God. Ready? One to read. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. One more time. Uh-huh. Now, please keep that scripture there. I understand this scripture to be in... Um, it's, it's like two women who are both pregnant. The name of the first woman is called good understanding. And this woman is pregnant. When she gives birth to a child, the name of the child that comes from her is called favor. Are we together? On this other side, there is another woman who is also pregnant. Her name is transgression. She gives birth to a child. The name of that child is hardship. So both favor and hardship are children that come from mothers. One mother is called good understanding. One other mother is called transgression. You know what transgression is? Violation of patterns. So this mother called good understanding can give birth to a child and we call the child favor. This other mother called transgression can give birth to a child. Hardship has an explanation. It's not just a sociological phenomena. It's not the absence of privilege and advantage. Hardship. Now, it's a very uncomfortable truth because when you talk like this, many people get offended, especially those who may, may, may seem to be going through all kinds of problems, whether financially and all of that. But you must be open-hearted. Let God be as the way of the transgressor is hard. This is very, very powerful. Many believers have refused to embrace this grace called favor and they have been limited as far as their divine assignment is concerned. And I'm praying that God himself will help us to really, really understand how favor works. Write this down. Favor truly is the number one reason why people succeed in the kingdom. The favor of God is the number one reason why people succeed in the kingdom. When Jesus came and walked in the flesh, Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, Jesus himself, can you imagine this? Jesus, the word of God, the logos of God, had to contend for favor to excel in his assignment. And Jesus increased, the Bible says, in wisdom, Jesus increased in stature, and Jesus, the word of God, needed favor to fulfill his divine destiny. He increased in favor with God and man. Now, this automatically tells you there are two levels of favor. There is favor with God and there is favor with men. You can have favor with God and not have favor with men. If you have favor with men, with God, you will have encounters, angelic encounters. You can even go to heaven and come back, but you will suffer in this life for sure because the earth has he given to the sons of men. Many people have favor with God. Access to illumination, understanding of scripture. 
But as far as excelling in life and destiny is concerned, they do not understand the dynamics of living in this earth and in this realm. You need favor both with God and men. We see the use of the favor with men when Jesus needed a donkey for his triumphant entry. It was because of this grace called favor upon him. He says, go and lose that colt. And if any man asks you, tell him the master had need of it. Brothers and sisters, if Jesus did not have this grace called favor, he would have been surprised what the owner of that donkey would do. Are we together? Yes, sir. Favor. Every testimony of victory and success in the kingdom is connected to favor. Every testimony of victory and success in this kingdom is connected to favor. Please write that down. It's very, very important. Every testimony of victory and success in this kingdom is connected to favor. Please write this down. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you matters. These are very powerful kingdom points that you must note. That in this kingdom, who hates you truly does not matter, but who likes you matters. A king hates one woman called Vashti and she loses her throne immediately. The king falls in love with a woman called Hadassah, Esther, and from a young village girl, she rises almost immediately to become king, queen. The king loves a man, even though that man was against the purposes of God, called her man. He hated God and hated the Jews. But simply because the king loved him, he remained in the palace and he had dominion. The day the king hated him, even if he repented, he would still go out of the palace. He would serve the God of the Bible outside the palace. Are we together now? A woman called Ruth meets a great and a noble man called Boaz. And he loves her and in a moment, her life is changed. For 430 years, this cruel beast of a king called Pharaoh, all kinds of pharaohs came and left, oppressing God's people. And suddenly God placed this grace upon the nation of Israel. And the same Pharaoh who oppressed them, the Bible says he gave them so much gifts, they were in a hurry to go out, they did not even allow their cake to the door to rise. Who likes you in this kingdom matters. Write this down. All blessings come from God through men to men. This is a powerful spiritual information. Please pay attention. This truth will help you to excel and serve the purposes of the kingdom and to live a very victorious Christian life while living out your destiny. Understand this. All blessings come from God but they come through men to men. When God says yes, and the helpers of your destiny say no, the answer will remain in the realm of the spirit. It will not manifest in this realm. Believe me. Hmm. If you say all I need in this life is God, and you're saying that to mean my allegiance, my love, my passion, and my commitment is to him, you are right. But if you say all I need in this life, as far as the dynamics of success is concerned, you are very wrong. Even God needed men. You asked the angel what he was doing searching for women with wombs. Jesus wants to come on earth. He's trapped in heaven until a woman donates her womb. Look at how the angel came to explain it. As mighty as he was, the word remained in the realm of the spirit. And the angel came and said, Mary, you are highly favored. This is what will happen to you. She said, explain it to me. Do you know the same question Mary asked was the same question Zechariah asked. They punished one and left another because Zechariah was not highly favored, but Mary was highly favored. Two 
two of them asked the same question when Zechariah was asking the angel explain to me the dynamics of my he said she shut his mouth and yet Mary said how shall these things be and the same Gabriel said let me tell you the power of the highest what kind of unfair thing is that but remember he started by saying you are highly favored so anything is with respect to that grace ask your questions because it's on you sit down sit down please pay attention don't be distracted if you are distracted it's an attack if you are distracted it's an attack God has something to say listen God has something to say listen listen pay attention for God has something to say so he said the power of the highest will come upon you she had to give the angel permission be it unto me according to your word and the word became flesh you will be learning in the course of this teaching that there are people on earth who are uncastable you can't cast them if God wants to help you he will make them favor you that's how you pass through that gate listen <laughs> believers may God have mercy on us and deliver us from ignorance there are many believers suffering today because the wisdom and the understanding that makes for living and excelling in the cosmos is largely absent and so we continue to pray in tongues fall under the anointing and find out that we are failing woefully in life because the dynamics of understanding how to live it within our sociological context is not there this is why god brought the church as an advantage to society are we together yes sir this world you see is the world of men and if you do not understand the dynamics of favor you can be called of God, you can be anointed, having encounters in the secret place. But you will be surprised that you may never live out your destiny. Favor. Every result you see in this kingdom is tied to favor. Every. Are we still together? Please write this down. You need favor to achieve your goals and fulfill your divine destiny in Christ. You need favor. You need favor to achieve your goals. You need favor to fulfill your divine destiny in Christ. How true this is, especially because of the times that we live in. You need favor to achieve your goals. You need favor to live out your divine destiny. What is favor? Favor is when God raises men to invest their time, invest their resources, invest their credibility over your destiny. When God raises men to invest their time, invest their resources, invest their credibility. Look at me, believers. Do you know most of the things we pray for the answers are not coming from heaven the answers are already on earth and most of the things we pray for today most of them are men dependent the prayer request of many people are on the tables of certain individuals on earth and even in this city it is within their power literally one signature sustains the power to turn a man's life around it is true How many great men and women of God called and loved so passionately by God who love God with all their heart but they have not submitted themselves to the spiritual intelligence accessing this grace to excel in life and ministry I have met anointed men and women on earth I am telling you I have met anointed men and women in this nation 
and I look at their life and I see their sincerity and passion for God, but I can look and with uncanny, uncanny precision, I can point the gaps, the absence of the graces in their lives that should work in synergy to produce an enviable destiny. One of them being favor. Many of you are very hardworking. You are sincere. You love the Lord. Many of us have seen our loved ones very hardworking. It is the absence of favor that has led to this statement, life is unfair. You hear people say so, life is unfair. Mm. Are we together? I have seen the advantage and the blessings of carrying the grace for favor. And there is a disadvantage. There is a serious disadvantage if you do not carry favor. Let me be honest with you. In this life, I have discovered and I keep discovering as God helps me to advance in my life and God helps me in leadership and ministry. I have found out people really don't care about you. This is a very painful revelation. It takes a long time usually for people. People don't care about you at all. They are, they are passionately obsessed with making a meaning out of their own lives. So whatever will make them live their own affairs and zoom their attention to you has to be divine. Listen, most of us have this superstitious idea that just because I love God, everybody will shut down on their destinies and just pay attention to me. No, sir. Apostle, the other day I sat in church and someone was looking at me and smiling. My brother, as he was looking at you, he was thinking about something else. I can almost tell you, you are not the one he was looking at. I'm not being sarcastic. Have you seen people talk and walk and you think they are talking to you? But they are talking about themselves. How is this rent going to come? Say, sorry, I'm not talking to you. I'm discussing something serious. Listen, do you know why I'm teaching you this? It's not just to laugh and to scorn. If it is true that your success does not just depend the dynamics of the manifestation now, is God in partnership to men to, to make it happen. And these men are currently distracted pursuing their own destinies. The, what do you think will make those men to leave whatever it is and then turn to you and give you dedicated investment of their time, dedicated investment of their resources, dedicated investment of their energy, allow you to climb and leverage upon them? I was preaching, come Sam, I was preaching years ago and a man of God preached before me and he shared a story that I found very, very powerful. Pay attention to the story. This is what he said. That there was a senior advocate, I think in this country or so or around the world, very senior, senior legal practitioner, very wealthy, very successful, influential, one whose name is a key. You know, names can be two things, keys or padlocks. But this one, his name is a key. And there was this young lawyer who had tried and tried, tried to set up his firm, it failed. Tried, very sincere, smart gentleman, watch this. And he was really frustrated. And he went to God in prayer and said, Lord, change my life. Things have to change. And every time he would stand, he would see some of these top clients, institutions, running around to talk to that senior advocate to help them, you know, in, in, in all kinds of legal services. And these people would be bidding for millions, millions of dollars. And that gentleman felt life was so unfair. I'm just looking for a fraction of this thing. Look what they want to give this man and he's leaving them. And what kind of thing is this? When God wanted to help that gentleman, this is what happened. In the presence, I think they were at a conference and there were several people, businessmen, billionaires, other lawyers, the captains of industry. And this young man came and cried and said, sir, please help me. Please change my life. And the man said, okay, I will help you. And he said, follow me. And he came out of the veranda and everybody was looking at him. Oh, this is that our senior advocate. What is he doing with this guy? Then he began to talk with him. So how are you? How is your wife? And he said, sir, that's not the issue. I'm he said, just talk to me. And they were walking together. How are you? Are you eating well? 
are you taking care? And he was angry. He was saying, sir, the issue is that I'm, I'm hungry. And the man said, he walked with him. And when he walked with him, he got into his office and said, if you still fail, don't come to my office again. <laughs> listen, listen. Do you know, you know what he was doing? People were saying, who is this man? Please sit down. Sit down and learn. You are in the house of God. The gentleman came out. True story. He was about to look for a bike to go home. And someone stopped him and said, Sorry, I saw you with this man. Um, listen, listen. He did not even ask him if he was ill. He said, sorry, we've been trying to get him to negotiate a deal for us, but he, our rate, can we please, can we work with you? And he mentioned a rate that was a breakthrough. And the gentleman was wise to compose himself. Listen, true story. The moment he did that, God granted him grace, called some of his partners and worked together. And within a year, this gentleman got a gift and went back to the office of that senior advocate. He knelt down and said, thank you for changing my life. Then the senior advocate asked him, he said, do you know what happened to you? That's what I'm interested in. Keep your gift. You have to study what happened to you so that you will use it on others too. Favor is when an individual invests his credibility on you. Listen carefully. Who likes you in this kingdom matters. For many of us, we live in a world where the only thing we know is money. Once money is not in front of you, you don't care about any other thing again. If they keep money and they keep men, you will carry money and it will finish and you will go back to square one. There are seven currencies that we use to purchase realities in this kingdom. Everything is bought. There are seven currencies. The least of them is money. I pray for you, Koinonia, from the depth of my heart. May you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money. Yeah. Let me pray that prayer again. And I say it with every sense of responsibility. May you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money in your ATM. Yeah. Please sit down. There are superior currencies. Money itself, you see, we have a series on finances coming. But money itself, you see, is a product. There is a capital that buys it. The name of the capital that buys money is what the Bible calls true riches. Money itself is a product. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. If I want to buy this Bible, come. Come. Lift this up. If you want to buy this Bible, will you be offended if I bring out money just to use? Huh? Okay, watch this. Please watch this. This, for instance, this is a hundred dollar bill. Lift it up. Watch this. If, let's assume this is hundred dollars. People are following from around the world, so we're using something universal. If this, if you want to buy this product, you need this. Is that true? So that means if I give you this, you start smiling because this is already a victim of the abundance of this. But if you want to buy this, what do you use? Because this is also a product. What do you use to buy this? Money buys this. But what if it is money you want to buy itself? What do you use to buy it? The one who is wealthy is not the one who has this. The one who is wealthy is one who has the capital that buys this. I've made up my mind. To go God's way for the rest of my life. I've made up my mind. You know, 
Many people believe that preachers are unintelligent people and when it has to do with salvation alone, that they have something to say. When it has to do with the matters that help people to excel and live a victorious Christian life while serving the purposes of the kingdom with dignity and honor, most people believe the house of God is not the go-to place. It's a wrong narrative. And I hope that by these meetings, God is using it to, he's changing our minds. The church is not a nuisance to civilization. Please understand this. Not every man of God is moving around trying to look for money and manipulate people. There are people who fear God sincerely and intend to be contributors to nation building. Are you learning? Thank you. Thank you. Now listen, pay attention. Favor. One person, write this down please. One person can be used by God to open a hundred doors of opportunity for you. One man can be used by God. Remember God has to be in the equation. One man can be used by God to open more than a hundred doors of opportunity for you. This is very, very important. When, when I realized, respectfully speaking, that I didn't have all the advantage that would be needed to serve the purposes of the kingdom effectively, it does not take money to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. It doesn't take resources, it doesn't take access, it doesn't even take influence. It just takes passion and hunger. Let me tell you where the challenge of many believers come from. The average believer usually gets born again, say, on campus or maybe while schooling. Is that true? And as a student, most times the emphasis is just on your spiritual growth and your academics. You can't be talking to a student about, you know, accessing some of these things. There may be distractions at that level. So the only message is messages that relate to pressing into God, depths in the spirit, you know, prayer and fasting, consecration, love for God and all of these things. But sooner or later, that person now becomes a family person. There are real responsibilities that are now added. Is that true? You will have to redesign your teachings as an effective man of God to do well to help the people remain spiritually in touch, passionately in love with God, but at the same time, you must now supply them the keys that help them to excel in their career, in their life, while serving the purposes of the kingdom. Otherwise, sooner or later, they will be distracted by the need to make a living and they will leave the things of God. It will cancel out all your investment of many years. I can tell you one of the reasons why many believers are not serious with God is because they have not engaged these systems of advantage to help them be victorious. The Bible says, he that told you have asked for nothing. It says to ask that you should receive to the end that your joy may be full. Is someone following tonight? Many sincere people in this country, many sincere people around Africa, many sincere people in this city, and probably many sincere people seated and listening to me, desire to live for Jesus, desire to love him with all their hearts, desire to serve the purposes of the kingdom in truth. But that may not be possible until you access these systems of advantage when they walk in your life they now afford you the time listen ladies and gentlemen it takes time to seek god it takes time to teach your children the things of god it takes time there is so much destruction in our world today you can't lock yourself for two three days to say i'm seeking the face of god because there are bills society will call you irresponsible even though you call yourself a passionate believer I know many people who started well in ministry. Many sincere people who loved God with all their hearts. Some of them today are not in ministry because the needs and the cares of life just strangled away their passion for God. 
Respectfully speaking, some of us, you go and meet our parents at home and in the villages and you talk to them about loving God and having passion for God and they look at you and pity you so much. They say, listen, let me tell you, I was the protocol to T.L. Osborne when he came into Nigeria. So all these things you are doing, we did it before. Why should someone become that frustrated? Do you know there are believers today who are angry at God because it looks like he's calmed them? He gave them a proposal that they will have a victorious life. They left idol worship and left everything and came to him. And the only thing they caught was spiritual fire. Not accessing the systems of advantage in the kingdom will make God appear like a wicked and cruel and self-centered God. You see, the way preachers teach about God, if, not, if you do not understand who God is, your conclusion will be that God must be a wicked and a cruel king. Here's the proposition. Leave everything and love God. Doesn't matter what happens to you. Don't worry about it. You just focus on this God. He, he gave his life to you. Give your own to him in return. Sacrifice everything and love him. What about my children? Just forget about them. He will take control. You just keep praying and make sure you love the Lord. Now your children are saying, Daddy, this God you are talking about, is it that he does not see that we have needs? They don't worry. The most important thing is, I love Jesus with all my heart. Until children become teenagers, teenagers become angry youth who help to kill you. You come to them, they say, look, I was a pastor's child. Don't you dare talk to me about this thing about God. Our world today has several options. They've, if we do not teach these things in its entirety, let me tell you, we are going to lose a whole generation. I assure you. I need, I need to put things in perspective so you don't think we are just carnally talking about success and victory. There is nothing we are discussing that is in isolation to kingdom come. We are a people of vision, people who passionately love God. So everything we are communicating is part, is a subset put together to make the believer become victorious. You ignore what I am teaching you sooner or later. Sooner or later. You may regret it. I bow my knees to the Lord in gratitude today that when the Holy Spirit brought this dimension, in addition to my passion for Jesus, my loving him, which remains my priority in life and in death, that I did not ignore these other aspects. I probably today would have also been an unfortunate preacher, manipulating people. You think if I'm hungry and my needs are not met and hunger is pressing me indefinitely, and I have the prophetic and you are here? Oh, come on. <laughs> sit down, sit down. I am, I am by no means trying to insult the body of Christ, no. I am saying the systems of advantage are some of the sponsors of integrity. Please hear me. As a man of God, you do not know this and you do not learn this. You don't learn these principles, you will be surprised at the things you will eventually do. You may never believe that one day you can manipulate a rich man or manipulate someone. Oh, I fear God with all my heart. The day your wife gets on her knees and her children and says, look, I'm tired of this, your thing. The devil will come to you again. I came to you 10 years ago, you say, I fear God. Now I've come to you in light of your needs. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. Regardless your background, listen to me regardless the disadvantages that surround your life i introduce to you tonight a system of advantage there is a grace called favor it can come upon an individual it came upon an a, a villager called esther and took her from the village to the palace favor the lifting power of favor not even jesus disregarded it when he walked upon the earth and jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor. 
I've had the honor and the privilege of searching the life of our fathers of faith. Men who have run this race and gone before us. And I've found out that in all they are getting, they did not ignore favor. Can I share with you a few keys as we pray? Because we are going to pray. Hmm. There are about four or five keys that I want to give you tonight that control and activate this grace called favor. And it is my prayer in the name of Jesus for you who are here and all who are following that in the name of Jesus, you obtain grace to walk in keeping with these principles. This is the good understanding that brings favor. I assure you, many of you, you see, let me tell you, within a short time, you will be surprised to see the beauty and the glory that comes out of your life. And you see, the surprising thing is that your prayer life will not go down. No, you are learning God's way. The surprising thing is that your passion for God will even be ever increasing. Are we together? Key number one. The first key that activates this grace, this mysterious grace called favor in the life of individuals, the life of businesses, companies, politicians, businessmen, ministers of the gospel, churches, it doesn't matter who. It's a principle that works for any, everybody. Are you ready? Key number one, honor. The first key that controls favor is honor. Please write it down. Honor is the key to access. Anytime a door closes before you and refuses to open, I can tell you the name of the padlock that was used to lock that door is called dishonor. Let's define honor very quickly. What is honor? Honor is the discerning. Please write it down. Honor is the discerning. Comma. Honor is the celebrating. And honor is the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference. The discerning, the rewarding or the celebrating and the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference, their uniqueness is called honor. So real honor starts with discernment. All men are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto us. But as far as the discipline of purpose, the sacrifice of destiny is concerned, all men are not the same. You must have the fortitude to recognize and to discern the difference. In the example I gave you earlier on, what, what, what do you think is the difference between the senior advocate and the young man who was about to start his law practice, I will tell you the difference. The difference is years of investing to build credibility. The difference is years and pain, years of mistake. And the price that that senior advocate had to pay to learn. When you honor men, listen to me, it's not human worship. There is human worship which is wrong. But I can tell you this, great men are not great by mistake. They are testaments of endurance. We live in a world that has mastered the art of trivializing people. You see a wealthy man, you begin to curse him and say, wicked Nigerians, all of you just destroying our money. Yet that man was born and he slept under a bridge one day. You see a man of God who is anointed and blessed and God is showing him mercy. And you may say, I don't mind all these people. God just gave them grace and they are acting as if. Listen, Africa, we must learn this. Nigeria, we must learn this. The church, we must learn this. We are equal in Christ. But the men and women you see who are the gatekeepers today, many of these men, if they tell you their stories, you will end up in tears. Testaments of endurance.
I was returning back from Lagos and um, the pilot that flew us to return, um, when they were introducing the man, they said this is an award-winning so, 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 and so, and so, one of the best and the finest in the industry. And when they said that we were happy, when we lifted all through the flight and when we landed, even me, I clapped. I said, that man, truly, he deserves every accolade. You can see the difference. You can see the intelligence and the professionalism. Now, for someone, you say, oh, well, pilots are pilots. Until the other version of this excellence flies you. <laughs> are we together now? Yes, sir. God's grace, absolutely phenomenal people, custodians of wisdom, people who you enter their office and you see awards from one end to the other as if they are selling it, and every single one was earned, and yet they sit down very humbly. Now, a wise person will quickly drop any man of God thing and say, sir, within these five minutes, these awards are not a showcase. Let me tell you what most Nigerians will do. Is it just because you are lucky? What is award? Let me tell you what an award is. Award is a testament that you have paid the price and your world, even though selfish, they've been compelled to recognize it. Are we learning? Don't be offended. I'm a bit harsh. I'm pushing you for a reason. Honor. The discerning. The celebrating. And the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference. You hear me say this is a house of honor. It is for a reason. Seated here, the overflows and following online are thousands and eventually will evolve to millions of people. Some of these people are absolutely phenomenal people. Some of the people you may be sitting close to today, by the protocol of their profession, you may not even have the access to sit close to them. Is that true? Many preachers have closed the door of favor because of dishonor. In as much as you are anointed, remember you are captain only within your jurisdiction. Are we learning? Everybody say honor. Honor, honor is one of the mysteries that when you engage it will bring you favor almost immediately. You keep insulting your boss. This man is a stupid man. As stupid as you think he is, he, every year he's turning over in billions and he's paying your salary without fail. Yet you call him stupid. Every one of us under the sound of my voice, I pray that God will grant you grace to have a renewed orientation today. You can literally earn a living practicing honor. That when people say, what are you doing? You say, I'm in real estate. What are you doing? I work with oil, an oil and gas firm. What are you doing? I practice honor. It's only a fool who will laugh at you. You can literally earn a living practicing honor. Honor is a stream of income. A stream of income that does not need capital to start. And yet it is marvelously fail-proof. Are we blessed? Oh no. You must discern. Never enter the presence of greatness and act as if you are not aware of it. No. No. As much as God continues to lift me when I step into the presence of great people, I'm not talking of human worship. No. That is wrong. But to give people an impression that, look, I am aware of your sacrifices. I am aware of all of these great things. One of the clearest expressions of honor is gratitude. Ingratitude is a display of dishonor. Someone pays your school fees, takes care of you, sends a million naira to you, and after two days you reply with a one word text, thanks. Hmm. He pays another one. Thanks. And it never comes again. Let me tell you, it was not a spirit. Spirits take advantage of our disobedience and ride upon it to help us lock those doors. I'm saying this to you because there are many of you today 
who have uncles and have people who in a heartbeat can open doors but you are surprised why they will not attend to you and you keep hearing that they are lifting orders it is dishonor that has closed that door you keep having dreams and visions of yourself moving forward and excelling in life yet it never manifests because the conduit the human conduit who should partner with god for your lifting you have dishonored and closed that door let me challenge you here tomorrow is monday work continues why don't you take it as a challenge and find something maybe a bottle of wine or something go and meet your boss if you have access to him and just just greet him and just tell him look um i just came to say thank you sir thank you so much it's been five years working with you or working with this company and i have experienced phenomenal growth i have learned i have grown and this is just me coming i went to church and i was taught the value of honor and i want to be a practitioner of the word i just want to say thank you let me tell you what your boss will do all right all right leave leave usually but there is no man who has vaccination against honor nobody there is nobody on earth who can resist honor people will express it in different ways the person looks at you and on that table he's deciding the next set of executives there was one more gap left and he just sought his next executive your certificate will give you a job but honor will guide your promotion there is a realm you get to where everybody has the same qualification with you the distinguishing factor becomes the practice of these mysteries that's what gives you an edge are we together please say honor practice honor practice honor the cheapest way to practice honor is thanksgiving discern and say thank you there are many men who never tell their wives thank you i don't mean to offend you but it's true thank you for what i paid their dowry there are many women who never tell their husbands thank you what for the bible says mm -mm, mm -mm. There are many children who never tell their parents, thank you. I didn't ask them to give birth to me. See, all those kinds of thinkings. Thank you. Learn it. Please. Don't just laugh. Learn it. Don't say thanks. No. It's a mediocre way of expressing honor. Don't send people a text and say there are many people who have done well just to let you know you are one of them no when it has to do with communication of honor you give people a sense of exclusivity you are that valuable to me honor is the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding there are people for instance who have shown me honor in my life and by the honor they have shown subconsciously I have become indebted to them I'm not saying do it but I'm just telling you there are people who went that far look at Nicodemus you now know that even though they were not born again they were wise people he came to Jesus by night he didn't say sit down I am a Pharisee let's talk he said rabbi he never called him Jesus. Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. Forget everything we said in the afternoon. We know. It's just our job that makes us do that. We know that thou art a man sent from God. Then he now says, no man can do these things except God be with him. And Jesus said, you won my heart. Let's talk. Verily, verily, I say unto you. He didn't even ask Jesus a question. Jesus started talking. Read your Bible. He had not asked a question yet. You're Jesus. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he now said, can a man enter? He expressed so much ignorance. And he said, look, Jesus, this, this is intelligence. And Jesus said, let me now explain. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he shall not enter the kingdom of God. And then the wind blew it where it listed. Jesus began another lecture. Same thing with the woman at the well. Have you noticed that honor is magnetic? 
it keeps people within your vicinity it keeps helpers within your vicinity it's the job of the Holy Ghost to send them to you it's your job to walk in partnership with him to maintain them never step into the door of greatness and allow that door shut you out no honor is what keeps the door open so that your children and your children's children can pass through There are people today when they endorse you, even if you have an enemy who does not like you, they are compelled to bless you because of the power of their sacrifice invested in their signature. We have to hurry up. Are you learning? The celebrating, the rewarding of difference. Turn to the person seated by your left and right and tell them I honor you, God bless you. Feel embarrassed, but still do it. Just say it. <laughs> Look at me. Let me challenge, let me challenge, let me challenge the young people in our nation and tell you why many people don't have doors. They come to you, usually once you are blessed, you have this plethora of relatives who are waiting angrily entitled believing that you owe them and then people just come in uncle how are you and they just bounce around and they are seeing people queuing your uncle is their ceo and they are respecting the person and you just bouncing and coming how are you and um uncle anything for the boys and he looks at you and just manages it gives you something and tells his pa any day you see this boy coming make sure you don't open the door again why because you communicated dishonor <clears throat> i shared with you okay i'm not sure i've shared it here in abuja a very true story i went for a conference years ago and a man of god shared that story let me use it to wrap up this subject of honor so we'll move to the next point true story this man was seated he was a pastor of a church and God was using him mightily, true story. But back at home, things were not working well, especially financially. Things were a bit rough. And yet he would sit down and the wife would sit down and they would hear testimonies of marvelous things that God was doing. Changing the lives of people and people would clap. But that man sat down there and there was fire on the mountain in his own house. One time during a service like this, the wife just got up and walked out of the meeting. The man was done, finished his counseling, and ran back home. My wife, what happened? Did I offend you? Did I say something during the message? She didn't say anything. And then he sat at table to eat, and he noticed that the plates that she was using to serve him, you know those women have those holy of holies <laughs> plates that only come out when there's a triumphant entry. So <laughs> that... <laughs> <laughs> praise the lord now watch this she brought those plates and served him and he kept asking what happened did i offend you we can talk about this she didn't say anything finally when she brought the last item kept it on the table she got down on her knees and she said servant of god my home is in trouble suddenly the man said the same anointing he used to feel in the church came upon him on that dining table and he laid hands not now not on the wife that grace do you know because every time he was at home he was a husband so the anointing for priests who did not find expression to bring breakthrough the woman was now wise and saying you are my husband but you are also a man of god today is not my husband i'm feeding i'm tired of feeding my husband and receiving compassion i need results so let me let me honor that guy. let me tell you this listen everybody you see is multi-dimensional the dimension you honor is the dimension that delivers to you your father can be a prophet and he can be blessing the nations and never see anything for your life your ceo can have a powerful signature that has decided the prosperity of institutions and yet you can be seated there and no door opens he that receives a prophet in the name 
as touching the office of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. There are many men of God who don't even waste their time praying for certain people because they know by the Spirit that they are not going to receive anything. The courage of pride that they bring. I'm not talking about kneeling down. You can kneel down and still be standing up in your heart. So I'm not talking of all those things. No. A settled recognition. Practice this and watch doors open for you. Practice honor. Go back, some of you this night, even though your parents may look aged, they may not have money, but they have grace. Mama, just to say thank you. Thank you for the honor and the privilege. Every time something is about to happen to me, you see it in your dream. I don't trivialize that grace. And they'll just say, my daughter, the God who helped me in my youth help you carelessly, and that will be it. Doors will begin to open for you at a frequency you may not explain. I am a benefactor of this. I know what I am saying. Many of you have heard my story. Years ago, when we went to preach, I went to preach in Ekiti State. And we flew through Ilorin and then went by road to Ekiti State. And strangely, I started seeing the obituaries of people and I saw that these people were in their hundreds, 120 something. I said, what is this? We got to a small community and I saw 132 years old, someone who had just died, 132. And yet abroad they are busy saying 118 is the oldest man. They should come to Nigeria. When I saw that, I knew that this is no longer luck. There must be a grace within this territory. I returned from the ministration and whilst we were passing there, I stopped at that community. Please pay attention. And the people could not, there, there was nobody who was speaking English there. They were speaking Yoruba. And I said, please, they should lead us to the oldest man within that place that I just want to honor him and just have him pray for us. So finally, we got someone who could speak limited English. And they took us to one of the, I think he's a man of God, one of the elders. And when I went there, I stood with my dear people and I was talking and then they would interpret. Oh, we are men of God. We just came to respect you and honor you just so that you can pray for us. The man laughed. He said, kneel down. He didn't say, you are a man of God. You are an apostle. Kneel down. <laughs> I got down on my knees with joy and with speed. When that man began to pray, he was praying in Yoruba, true story. I felt like a crown was just put on my head whilst he was praying. When he was done, brought out a seed, gave him, and then when we were going to return to the car to continue the journey, um, I now went to thank some of the women who were gathered that I was greeting. Did you know that I, I, I greeted initially to lead me to that man? When I went there, they now told me that this one 32-year-old man who died, that the woman standing there was his wife. Ah, I said, let's go back. The Bible says two shall become one. Even, so the, the man is dead, but he's still alive in her. She, she was like 100 and something, oh, standing like that, no stick, no nothing. Ah, what sort of a grace is this? And I said, please, they should tell her that she has to pray for me before I go. Do you know what happened? The woman tapped me and said, follow me. We entered a room. I didn't care where I was going. I, I said, when we entered the room, listen, she started showing me pictures. That was the wife of his youth. It was not Keturah in old age. The wife of his youth. And you know, people those days, they could marry 17, 18. The wife of his youth. She showed me the picture until maybe about a year or two before he died. And then I said, please, they should tell her. I don't know whether I'll call her my grandmother, now great-grandmother. I said, please pray. When I said so, she said, kneel down. She removed both of her shoes and stepped her feet. I'm showing you the power of honor. She stepped her feet, her bare feet on the ground and began to pray and prophesy and prophesy and prophesy for over 15 minutes. 
When she was done, I honored her. I entered the car smiling. I ran straight to Zaria and I told my people, I said, stand up, oh, I've come with some things. <laughs> Please sit down. He says, such as I have. Yes, sir. You can know you have a grace. Honor. There are people today who got lands that they never had to pay for. They honored their way into ownership. There are house helps today who have been given inheritance worth millions and billions because the children were too irresponsible to be trusted with that kind of thing. Oh no. Whilst you're seated in one minute, please just lay your hand on your head and declare, Lord, the capacity for honor I receive. I run away from this honor outside, inside, following online Azaria family. Please pray. I obtain grace. It's time for my life to change. Please pray. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, My lifting has come. Oh, 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 my rising has come. Oh, 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 my rising has come. Oh, oh, oh my lifting has come. Oh, 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 my lifting has come. Are you declaring honor? Father, every door that has been closed over my life, through this honor, may your mercy speak. Political doors closed through this honor. Ministerial relationships closed through this honor. Access to resources access to the credibility of the great this grace called favor hallelujah praise the lord please sit down let's continue very quickly is god helping someone number two the second key that activates this grace of favor is called value the second key that activates favor in an unquestionable dimension is value what is value value is a measure of your usefulness through your ability to provide solutions a measure of your usefulness within the context of a civilization a measure of your usefulness through your ability to solve problems and to provide supernatural solutions or solutions generally solutions please pay attention we're praying are we together please look up the bible says see yet thou a man diligent in his business it leaves you with an assurance that you will stand before kings and you will not stand before mean men. I call it the law of competence. It's not enough to just be valuable. You have to be exceptionally valuable. And your value has to be needed and useful within the context of a civilization. Listen, the kingdom works based on a reward system. You have to understand this. How do you know you are valuable? by who is willing to pursue you how do you know you are valuable by the inconvenience that people can make to have access to you when people begin to complain and give excuses is because you are not valuable enough people press the crowd to meet jesus in the presence of value 
pain is no longer a factor. When you find people who are exceptionally valuable, look the efforts. Now, I'm not promoting herbalists, but just for instance, from a value standpoint, look how people leave their dignity and they will go to the bush to see a herbalist. Turn backwards and they turn quietly because you are looking for some favor. Can I tell you this? If people have an excuse as far as convenience is concerned to meet you is because you are not valuable enough. You must make up your mind. As men and women of God, please listen to me, ministers and co-laborers in the gospel, just because we're in ministry does not mean we are not valuable. Your value may be supernatural in context, but you have to understand, you can defend the reason why God blesses you through men. Away with that idea that especially when a man of God prospers, people now begin to... It's not everybody who is manipulating and, and demonstrating lack of integrity. The moment there is dispensing of a value, whether it is sold or given free, the law demands, the law of God demands that that individual be rewarded. Are we together? Everybody say value. Second to the Bible, I have been marvelously blessed by men and women that God has raised and honored to carry the baton, especially within the personal development industry, especially those who have, whose, whose perspectives are consistent with scripture. They have helped to mold my understanding as far as value is concerned. Listen to me. Let me give you a big key. Focus on developing yourself more than your business plan. It's good to give value, but it's best to be the value yourself. When you develop yourself, I have taught us here that success is not what you pursue. If you find yourself pursuing success, you are, you've already missed it. You attract success by who you become more than what you do. Your becoming is greater than your doing. This is where most people miss it. We think that we become successful because of the things we do. Your doing is only useful when you have become. Your evolution is more important than your doing. The most important thing about success is not what you obtain, but that version of you that has to be attained to have that result. There is a better cultured version, a more disciplined version, a more spiritual version, a more cautious version. That is the version it takes to obtain the result you are looking for. Your growth is greater than your doing. Are we learning? Make up your mind to be valuable. What does it mean to be valuable? To have the capacity to provide solutions. Listen to me. You, your solutions have to be needed and useful. Don't say, I like what I'm doing. You are not the one who will pay yourself. Your solutions have to be needed and useful within the context of a civilization. I'll not say much there because of time. Value. Train yourself. I made up my mind as a covenant commitment, as a man of God, that in every area the Lord would have me serve his purposes in ministry, leadership, every other area. I will develop myself to the core, not from a competitive standpoint. I want to be so effective. I learned this from Dr. Miles Monroe. As a man of God, he had the largest church in Bahamas. He was an advisor to close to 16 presidents or thereabout. I hope I got the statistics right. Out of his books, about 40 or 46 of them were bestsellers. No manipulation. Just the, the superior content of his understanding. He had relevance across ministry, the political space, economy. And yet he was a disciplined and well-cultured man. What a mentor indeed. Are we learning? You must be valuable. Capacity. Capacity. 
burn the candles in the night and do not pity yourself while you do that beware of arrival mentality mediocrity is what is destroying people in africa destroying people in this nation destroying people in ministry in business in politics how do you know that your value has gotten to its prime when your audience are only kings when you find out that you are in the palace then you can truly say you have tried if you have not served kings you are not there yet when your audience when your recipients are the kings the, the kings of an industry then you know you are valuable i'm just pointing it out we're not doing it teaching on, on on value necessarily again let me encourage you do not stop until you serve kings it is only kings that can reward you in a way that befits your sacrifice every other reward is just a supportive a, a support system until you get to the palace how much did joseph get for interpreting the dream of the wine of the baker how much did joseph get for interpreting the dream of the of the he got the leverage that took him to the palace but he solved the king's problem once you know what he got read your bible read what david got for killing goliath we worship god we worship jesus today because he's king of kings and lord of lords but we also worship him because he's done something that no god and no man can do nobody has the power to forgive sins and translate you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son the value the all-surpassing value that he has defeating death hell and the grave the hymn writer says up from the grave he arose every other god every other leader died and did not come back to life but jesus he rose again victorious today he sits at the right hand of the father number three are we learning what is the third key that activates favor relationships 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 amos chapter 3 and verse 3 let's hurry up please is god speaking to us tonight the third key that activates this grace called favor is called relationships can two walk together except they be agreed the word agreed there means compatible your degree of agreeableness can two walk together two companies two individuals a couple can two walk together except they be agreed listen the command be fruitful also means be relational because everything becomes fruitful on the basis of relationship is that true the relationship between a husband and his wife is how children come a relationship between you and the holy spirit is how the anointing comes the relationship between you and the word is how understanding comes everything multiplies on the basis of relationships if you do not understand relationships you will spend your lifetime paying for it what are relationships I've talked a bit on this advantageous connections relationships are advantageous connections for instance when an armed robber comes to you and points a gun he's close to you but you are not in a relationship because it's not an advantageous connection he came to steal he came to kill he came to destroy relationships are advantageous connections and listen there is an intelligence that has to do with managing relationships many christians do not understand the power of relationships this is where respectfully speaking unbelievers have seemed to have an edge over believers you may have heard me say it in my teachings please look at me what will make a man fly a private jet from one nation and go to another nation to celebrate the two-year-old birthday of a billionaire's child is the child the man's friend what is he doing in that house such a busy man will leave everything 
and come and invest his time. You see him play, someone that does not like children by default. Everybody knows he doesn't like children. Now all of a sudden, because you see adaptation is proof of honor. You have to be able to adapt. And he's playing. And the man looks at him and says, look, I'm looking for a team of five people that I'll commit to be regional directors of my company. And now that you have come, I trust you. Relationships. It is dangerous for you to not have strategic relationships. Let me give you an advice. Obtain grace from God to build relationships. Um, I, have a, I have a teaching on that. I've not taught it in Abuja, but there is a very powerful teaching that, that I, will, I will talk a bit on relationships. The moment God lifts you, the first thing to do with your lifting is to use it as a leverage to build relationships. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting, use it quickly. Because according to the law of times and seasons, it will not always be like that. So the moment God gives you a window of opportunity, trap your lifting with relationships. Your relationships will keep you afloat. Are we learning? Yes, sir. Relationships. Relationships. The primary relationship being your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, your relationship with the Holy Spirit, your relationship with the Word of God, but your relationship with strategic helpers. We live today in evil times. And I'm praying for you. May you have relationships with the police. May you have relationships with the judicial system. May you have relationships with economically empowered people. May you also have relationship with those you call non-entities. Because the day of their relevance, according to the law of time and chance, is coming. Listen, do not only have relationship with people who have risen. You've seen their future already. Those who are rising are more powerful than those who have risen. The Bible says it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. Can I tell you this? If you were not there for people at their state of infancy, don't expect to be invited at the table of greatness when they arrive there. They only remember who helped them rise. Relationships. Strategic connections. Don't look for wealthy and blessed people alone. Many of us, our relationship is just for wealthy. It's, it's, a, it's already clearly, it suggests that it's a parasitic relationship. Some of us see some of these are young ones, these small children come, you push them around, I want to see Joshua Selman, and you've pushed the next prophet without knowing. This is why it's good to show honor to all men, those above you, your contemporaries, and those supposedly below you. Relationships. Hallelujah. Please look up. Let me challenge you. Is there someone in your life today that you can actually pick the call and call him or her and say, please, I am in need of a financial situation. Help me. Not borrow me. Help me. And the person will say, I love you too much. Our relationship is so strong. I have a commitment to you. If you don't have such a person in your life, you are in trouble. Listen. Is there someone in your life today you can call and with one dial, no matter how busy he can pick. Apostle, people don't like me. No. If the problem is everybody, the problem is you. Mm. Nobody will just invest time like that. Relationship is an investment. Don't expect returns if you did not invest. Don't give people two minutes of your time with 10 years worth of trouble and expect them to remain with you. No, sir. When people do not perceive you to be an advantage to their lives and their destinies, they will love you, but they will put you in a group quietly and leave you there. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive.
It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. Listen, don't allow circumstances choose your relationships. Allow the Holy Spirit in partnership with your mind and your wisdom to choose your relationships. Many of us have not, have not been intentional about choosing relationships. Godly people, visionary people, people of excellence, people who love you sincerely in life and in death. I know a man, true story, his house got burnt. And before he arrived there, the friend had gotten a place and moved the children and a few things they could recover there. Relationships. Is there someone in your life today that you can call by 2, 3 a.m. and say there is an attack? My wife is having an attack. My children are having an attack. I'm not in Nigeria. And the person can say, in 10 minutes, I'm in your house. Listen, I'm, I'm giving you a wisdom key. If you, no matter how blessed you are, a day will come. You will see that you cannot solve every problem by yourself. And woe betides the man who is alone in the presence of challenges. Even Jesus, your Jesus, when he was on his way to Golgotha, he got to a point where he was weak, he had lost blood. The Bible says he fell there with the cross. There needed to be a man who volunteered and said, I will hold the cross for him. I've taught you the ministry of destiny helpers. And I've taught you these four categories of people you need in your life. Let me do a one minute recap in case you were not here or you've forgotten. Number one, that when it has to do with relationships, destiny helpers you need divine connectors they can't help you but they know who can help you and they can connect you to that person number two you need men of influence they are willing to invest their credibility and their track record to help you rise number three you need gifted people the men and women who produce results sometimes you need more than kindness you need results and then number four burden bearers the assignment of a burden bearer is not to move you forward. They are the ones who stop you from going backward. If you do not have these four categories of people in your life, you are in trouble. If you have to pay for everything by yourself, you are in trouble, even if you are blessed. A day will come, money cannot buy anything. You will need the hearts of men. Somebody must believe in you enough to stake their lives. You cannot be a general friend to everybody. Somebody must see you and keep you in the holy of holies of their hearts. And say, let me not hear that this woman has a headache or a headache, not when I'm alive. Can anybody make that kind of statement and say, look, no matter what it is, you can count on me. Respectfully speaking, there are many CEOs, politicians, even preachers who spend their lives serving people and serving the needs of people but they did not build relationships. And in old age, you see many angry and lonely people. Sometimes when I see elderly people lonely, I ask questions, did they ever have children? They worked in the secular job for 30 years and 35 years. We were concerned about promotion, not relationships. Now you retire and every relationship goes. If people respect you just because of title, you are in trouble. They must love you beyond titles and be knitted like David and Jonathan. A good place to pray before we finish up. Can you again lay your hands on your head and say, Father, connect me to strategic relationships even in this season. First, oh God, make me one who is worth being friends with. Life will be hard. You're a man of God. Listen to me. No matter the call of God upon your life, you will depend on strategic relationships to rise. Go ahead. Are you praying? Please pray. Please pray. You came to church. 
you need a friend that sticks closer than a brother you need men that can stand for you and say under my watch your children will never beg for bread not when i'm alive how big he worshiping all of the days of my life how big he worshiping all of the days of my life how big he helping you all of the days of my life i'll be here helping you all of the days of my life i'll be here holding you all of the days of my life i'll be here holding you all of the days of my life listen if you have friends who love your money alone love your anointing alone love your ministry alone mog if you leave ministry today the people who love you will they still love you ceo if you leave your job today can this, have you not seen politicians who lost elections and in a moment everybody who is saying yes sir just left them who is the next person our world is full of selfishness let me give you an advice when you find people who love you for who you are pay the price and keep them swallow your pride and keep them not everybody has that time to love you for who you are this is wisdom And when God lifts you, please obtain grace to see the people who love you sincerely. The great are largely surrounded by psychophants for obvious reasons. You must obtain grace. That house help may not have money to give you, but I assure you they will stand by you forever. Some of you love everybody except your children. And yet when you are sick, they are the ones who stand close to you. Can I tell you the truth? Do not forget that there are people who love you for who you are, not what you have. Money can be deceptive. Anointing can be deceptive. Titles can be deceptive. This is why many people are heartbroken and shattered into pieces today. Because they think they are popular. They think they have crowds. Oh, I have a great, I'm a great politician. I'm a great man of God. I have thousands and millions of people. Can they be there standing for you? Can they cry with you and say, we are here crying? Can I tell you, a true friend is not one who stands with you. A true friend is one who dies with you. If you have a friend you can only live for, you are wasting your time. The real proof of friendship is not life, it's death. I'm preaching now. I'm only doing what God has asked me to do. Two more. We have a few minutes. Number one, honor. You see that favor is merited. Do you agree with me now? When you learn this and someone says you are just lucky, just pray the prayer of mercy for the person. Oh, why are you favored like this? Why does everybody love you? I think you are just lucky. Oh, dear. Don't be angry. Just give them this message. Number one, honor. Number two, value. Number three, relationships. Number four, the fourth way that you activate this grace called favor is through prayer. You can provoke favor through prayer. Favor is one of those systems of advantage that can be activated in prayer. Ask Jabez, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me, enlarge my coast, let your hand be upon me. Hmm. You can pray favor. I prayed for favor for one full month. It was a February. From first to the last month, 
favor lord the heart of man is selfish but by your grace you are able to place something upon the heart of kings and nobles that can cause them to be attentive to your need when god says amen to your prayer it is truly amen god will raise a fish to bring out coin from his mouth does a fish eat coin but when favor is on you God can use Pharaoh to give you gold. Everything has riches in it. It only hides it. It's favor that allows them to give it. The Bible says, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. Please listen to me. There are many of you right now, the truth is that with the current price of land, physically speaking, you may never have the opportunity to build a house in your lifetime. But favor can build one for you and give you the key just like that. It's not a call to irresponsibility. It's a system of advantage. Are you learning? Please go back this week. Um, I'll give us an assignment by the Spirit when we're wrapping up. Use this week among the many prayers you will pray. Pray favor-provoking prayer. Lord, show me favor. I didn't come from a family with any advantage by default. If you do not help me, I don't have an uncle or an auntie somewhere. But I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. I look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. One more time. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Yahweh. Listen, remember that men are not your source. They are only channels. The real source. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. The hymn writer says, it comes from God. It only comes through men. When you exalt men above God, you are in trouble. Can I tell you this? Truly, God can give favor to men. God can pick you like this. And say, where is he? I, I'm, I'm, I'm in Abuja here. And God can pick you and give an instruction and tell men to honor you. And in one week, God can use men to change your life in a way that you'll be afraid of your own testimony. Believe this. Oh, favor. favor-provoking prayer. There is a way you can hold on to the four horns of the altar, except you are not tired of your situation. If you keep giving flimsy excuses, you may sit down there as a preacher, as a businessman. You are not just an entrepreneur. You can go back. My father and my God, I bow my knees to our father and begin to pray. Favor, oh God. I call for favor. And whilst you are praying, God will wake someone and say the one billion that you have kept for charity to help people, there is one of my sons and my daughters that requires help from there. That person is the only breadwinner out of 12 people. If you do not arise, listen, how did the salvation of the Gentiles come? Read your Bible, Acts chapter 10. Cornelius was praying. Cornelius was sowing seeds. And God himself told Peter, Get up. Don't call what I've called clean unclean. There is a call. Carry your presence straight to the house of Cornelius. That was where the salvation of the Gentiles started. Listen to me. Please hear me. Minimize knocking on the offices of men and ask God to do the knocking for you. Those men will not listen to you. They are too busy living out their destinies. 
Don't go around getting angry and saying, this person, you have what it takes to help me. When God knocks, see, there is a name he's called. He's called the father of spirits. He can wake any spirit in the middle of the night. Have you considered this family? And he says, do something for them. And someone just shows up in your life and says, by divine instruction, I don't like you, but by divine instruction, he said, every month for the next two years, I should give you this. And you are wondering, it's a lie. You may think these are some crooks trying to play games with you. Can I tell you this? The Bible says, what things soever ye desire, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest it, and thou shalt have it. How could I lead a ministry like this without the favor of God? This is the, there are many of you having high blood pressure today. I'm, I'm not trying to insult you. Forgive me. But it's true. If God does not show you favor, life is hard. Unbearably hard. Where will the finances come from? Even if you have money, where will the access come from? Do you know what it means for gatekeepers to open their hearts over you? It has to be God. In one minute, I'd like you to pray, Father, may, may favor come upon my life. May favor come upon my life. Difficult things become easy when the grace called favor is upon you. Pratesa de Balandas Kata Brekate Parakoshka de Brendege de Balahaskia. Ye have not because ye ask not. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now listen, listen, please listen. The last key, I will give it to you so that we'll pray. We're out of time. The last key to favor is found in Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. I call it the Esther anointing. There is the grace for favor can be imparted. Yahweh. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh Yahweh Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 something is coming on someone right now hmm. Pay attention Now when the turn of Esther the daughter of Abihel the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter, listen carefully, was come in unto the king. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of how many? All them that looked upon her. Next verse. 16. The Bible says, so Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus in his royal house in the 10th month which is the month Tebeth in the 7th year of his reign and the king loved Esther above all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti when you read the verses before 15 the bible says there were many women and yet, Esther went to this strange man called Haggai. He had worked with the king a long time. He knows what the king is looking for. And she asked him, what does the king really want? And Haggai said, there is an oil I will give you. Just keep rubbing on your body for one year. That's all. Forget all this how to work. 
The Holy Spirit can search the heart of your destiny helper. He knows what he wants. Hear me, my brothers and my sisters. Truly, there is an anointing for favor. There is a grace called favor. The assignment of that grace is to insist on the heart of men. The proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is the loyalty of the hearts of men towards you and towards your assignment. Access to systems and structures. Hmm. This is the grace that has been so difficult to come upon many believers. Because of dishonor, because of lack of value, because of disobedience to the principles of relationship, because they do not ask, and finally because they have not cared for such a grace. Some have received the grace for prayer. Some have received the grace for signs and wonders. Some have received all kinds of graces. But the grace and the impartation for favor we have a few minutes. We are going to spend the next three to four minutes. No prayer point. I'm going to leave you with the God of your salvation. Everyone, you're going to cry and say, Father, I can't remain the same. Not after this meeting. Those following online from any nation, please pray. You came to the house of God. This is service to change your life. Think of your children while you pray. Think of your children's children while you pray. Think of the work God has given you while you pray. Go ahead and pray. Pray. You're on your way to better day. Pray. Something is changing. You're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. Never weak again. Ah. You're on your way to better days. It's God's prophecy for your life. You're on your way to paradise. Status is changing. There's no more decline. You're on your way to paradise. Status is changing. No more decline. You're on your way to paradise. You're on your way, on your way, on your way to better days. You're on your way, on your way. Go ahead and declare. I tap into this system of advantage. I veto my background. I veto my limitations. By the power of the Holy Ghost. I tap into this grace called favor. This grace called favor. This grace called favor. Favor with God. Favor with men. Favor with God. Favor with men. Favor with systems. Favor with structures. Favor with gatekeepers. Shkata pa kata pa koto skoto branda gade. Ekata pa kata pro koto pas koto praga te balagadia. Kata la kata praga te baros koto prando skoto. Ekata praga te praga te pro skoto balabala. Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Listen. I just feel stirred in my heart to give us one prayer point. Every spirit sponsoring any closed door because of my carelessness 
in complying with these principles. First, I obtain mercy. And then number two, I scatter that door. It must open for me. Every spirit that closes the door leading to the next level of my Christian experience, I obtain mercy. Mercy for dishonor. Mercy for being mediocre. Mercy for not understanding relationships. Mercy for not being prayerful. And mercy for rejecting this impartation. But then I command every devil, lift your hands. It's time for the door of my destiny to be opened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Listen. The law of impartation demands that number one, you must believe in God who is the source of all things. Number two, you must believe in the vessel that he's using. Remember when there was a problem with oil, the instruction was go to them that sell and buy it now you know how you buy it buy it with honor buy it with value buy it with relationships i just gave you currencies buy it with honor buy it with value buy it with relationships buy it through prayer go to them that sell and buy our doors closing over your destiny then you need favor go to them that sell and buy is your business crashing your financial life crashing affecting your spiritual life you used to have time for god time for prayer time for worship to give to the house of God right now you who was on fire you've gone down spiritually because of looking for tea and bread go to them that sell and buy who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the Lord mighty in battle Amen who is this king of glory the Lord strong and mighty For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The power and the glory forever Amen. Your lifting and your rising. Amen. Amen. To the change of season. Amen. Amen. You don't have to kneel, but I want to pray for you. He says, Such as I have, give I unto you. Listen. I don't stand by any human sense of bragging to claim there is nothing we have that has not been given by God. But I will be lying and God will judge me if I tell you by the privilege of God's grace we have not obtained this grace also. It's been difficult for believers. Listen, every time God sends a grace and a word to Jacob it is because of Israel. There are things you cannot do in your life until this mantle is upon you there are doors you can't do end time ministry without the favor of god you will compromise beyond your imagination the key to integrity is not only character it is favor access to the hearts of men many of you will marvel at the things that happen to you i'm telling you that a door that for 10 years have refused to open you carry this esther anointing 
if Esther as a village girl with one encounter with this oil oh it changed my life I'm indebted to God forever some of you are crying think of your children right now you're about to receive an impartation think of mama at home Ten years from now add 10 years to your age 20 years from now add 20 years to your age no achievement no nothing I don't want you to feel bad but it's time to get serious there is a system of advantage you have not tapped into few minutes and we're done those following online, following from whatever nation, God is giving you another opportunity again. Azaria family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I know it works. Brothers and sisters, I know. I know. There is this grace. Mama, you may be old in age, but this grace still works. Apostle, I didn't have the opportunity to go to school. Find comfort. Favor works. Apostle, I'm tired. People keep disappointing me politically in business. Find comfort. I come from a village. It's difficult to even see the map. Find comfort. Favor is not a license for laziness. That's why I told you it's not just unmerited access. It is divine help. God and men in partnership holding your hands to lift you. Please pray one more minute. You're about to receive this impartation. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why i will lift up my voice and sing yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You've taken the pain and the sorrow away. You've given me peace undeniable. There's no need to cry cause you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Yeah. <laughs> Now in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic office by the privilege of the election of grace. And I stretch my hands first over you here in Abuja, our family in Zaria, those following from around the globe, from America to Europe, to Asia, the Caribbeans, as many as are following and will follow in the name of Jesus the one who has shown us mercy I decree and declare right now receive ye this grace called favor receive ye this grace called favor I place this mantle upon your life take this grace now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the morning experience favor in the afternoon experience favor in the night experience favor in Nigeria experience favor in America experience favor in Europe experience favor every door that 
needs favor for to be open i declare may favor open that door now hear me every strategic relationship you have lost through carelessness and lack of discernment i call on my god who is also your god let there be a supernatural reconnection now every door that dishonor has shut that was once open and dishonor shut it by the mercy of the god of david we reopen that door now and in the name of jesus many of you are gifted but the favor to announce you is not there you are so gifted gifted to a point that is institutions that should be patronizing your gift in the name of jesus by the in the name of jesus christ i give your gift visibility now by this gift let those who have the capacity to both discern and reward you may they find you in the name of jesus hear me in this new season of your life every relationship you need to connect with some of you may not know them international relationships ministerial relationships i declare may that connection happen for you now everyone anointed commissioned and ordained to find you and hold your hand in this season wherever they are i stand by the prophetic i call them into your life now hear me i stand under the corporate grace of the fathers of faith who have transferred these graces to us and under this corporate anointing i declare in the name of jesus as a contribution of this supply to the body of christ find the grace for favor by this grace shame reproach hear ye the word of the lord let god's people go now hear me by this grace upon you whoever has forgotten you no matter how long in the name of jesus by favor may the book of remembrance be opened over you now even pharaoh who hated israel with passion was the one who ended up giving them gold and everything they used to build the tabernacle in the wilderness can i tell you this when favor comes upon you it's not only friends that bless you anybody directed by god i pray for you whoever must bring forth their credibility their time their resources their endorsement to shift you to the next level i call them forth by prophecy now now i'm praying for the body of christ but now let me pray for the koinonia global family you belong to a family that is mysteriously favored of god i pray for you in the name of jesus out of the abundance by reason of this prophetic connection step into superior realms of favor by this favor may your life be a fearful wonder first to you and then to everyone around you in the name of jesus christ please listen walk conscious this i i want to encourage everyone please please just listen to the following instructions number one please 
ensure at least three or four people listen to this message. Let it be your gift. Forget about buying recharge card or whatever. Look for at least three people. Maybe your family members, maybe your husband, maybe a director. So you've been giving people money. Thank God for that. You can go to, I think it should be on our YouTube page. Go there. After this service, personally, I'm going to listen to this message this night again. This is not the message to say, I have heard. Go and settle down like a student in the school of the spirit. Listen to those points and pray. Remember, every day, you are doing it at your discretion. It's not like we're doing it as a ministry. Pray every night, Lord, open doors of favor. And you watch what the power of God will do in your life. But please, listen to me. From this week and for all the other weeks, don't come alone. Well, if there is no space, if you have to sit on the roof, sit on the roof. Invite your friends and your family. This is not just coming for service. There are graces, there are truths that I'm going to be sharing by the Spirit. And I'm telling you at the end of this, you will stand in awe. The only thing you will be left with is tears and praise. Because when you see the way your life will move, your company, your ministry, whatever it is. Let me make the altar call. Jesus is the foundation for not only favor, but salvation. Please, let's minimize movement. We just thought on honor. There are people in this auditorium. There are people seated around the balcony, all the overflows outside. There are those following from different nations, Zaria. You're saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. That is the bottom line. No cajoling, no manipulation. I need Jesus. Or you are saying, Apostle, right now, I need to reconnect. Remember, we spoke about relationships. The first relationship you need is Jesus. Wherever you are, we have just one minute for you. Please, I'd like you to leave your seat. You are saying, Apostle, I want you to please pray for me. I don't want to return home the way I came. Wherever you are, please leave your seat. Come and stand. Those from outside, I'd like you to come. Join them quickly. I want to pray for you by myself. God bless you. Please come. Please come. Don't be ashamed. Come. Don't wait for someone to be the first. You are the first. Come. 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 Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Keep coming. Come to Jesus. Yod hey, wa hey, is your name. Breathe, Lord. Please keep standing. Stand. You don't have to kneel. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. Come. Just breathe your name upon me, breathe. He can give you a new beginning tonight. Just breathe your name upon me. Yod your name. If you're still joining them, please join them. If you join them later and you don't pray the prayer, you will have to pray. All the overflows, come stand. Come, please come, run to Jesus. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do, cause I need you. More and more I'm chasing after you No matter what I have to do I need you More and more I salute every one of you Young and old alike Standing, some of you are crying Don't be ashamed of your tears Jesus is here That's why you came to church Please lift your right hand all the overflows do same. Zaria, US, Canada, UK, everywhere. You're making this decision. Lift your right hand there in your room, your office, wherever. I'd like you to say this prayer after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. 
I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Tonight, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I declare that I reign in life. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I live a victorious Christian life from today and forever. I am a child of God. I belong to the family of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you for this once. It's always a delight when we have many come to Jesus. I declare by the authority of scripture that your sins are forgiven and you are partakers of the life of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I commend you to the ministry of the word and I commend you to the ministry of the spirit that you'll be established and grounded in righteousness and that you will live your life loving Jesus, living victoriously and serving the purposes of the kingdom. I declare every power that is not of God, let it be broken over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, look at me. Tap this gentleman for me. The one whose hand is shaking. Look at me. I curse that spirit out of him now. Help him. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that from today, you are saved. You are children of light. Sons and daughters of the living God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold that mama for me. I command this spirit. I'm seen like a serpent. Let her go. You heard her declaration. Let her go now. The name of Jesus Christ. Salvation is a real experience. Is a real miracle. The Lord bless you, every one of you. The Lord increase you. Now, very quickly, please open your eyes. Amen. We're done praying. There's a gentleman waving the placard, the counselor. Please, all of you in concert, just move to my right, which is your left move wherever whatever direction you see the placard there will be a group of people zaria same thing and all the centers available in the name of jesus let's celebrate them as they go hallelujah praise the name of the lord again let me remind you please do not come alone next week come with your heart open come ready to receive please rise up as we close the service thank you for your patience the lord bless you the lord honor you the Lord bless you. I declare that your week beginning is a week of excellence. It's a week of victory. Your passion for God remains on fire. Your passion for the word remains on fire. Your passion for prayer remains on fire. The Lord will grant you grace to experience favor all through this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let's share the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let it rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. See you next week.